The other approach is to forego the pleasures of sketching any version of the creationist history of life on Earth uh, for the subtle but no less potent tactic of indiscriminately bashing evolution under such labels as teach the controversy, of which more in a bit. Now, intelligent design is fundamentally about finding something that can be billed as a scientific alternative to evolution while surviving constitutional scrutiny. Your first scientific theory that was developed in consultation with the team of lawyers. So, <laughs> consequently, intelligent design proponents insist that their view does not entail any particular conception of the designer. It could be God, they can see, but on the other hand, it could be aliens from outer space or perhaps time traveling cell biologists from the far future. I am not making this up. For similar reasons, Intelligent design strives to maintain a big tent in which all anti-evolutionists are welcome to shelter, including young Earth creationists, old Earth creationists, ultra-Orthodox Jewish creationists, Islamic creationists, and Krishna creationists. About the only anti-evolution group apparently unwelcome is a clone-crazed alien-worshipping free love UFO cult. The aliens. <laughs> The Raelian's public announcement of support for teaching intelligence design in public schools was met with a stony silence. <laughs> so, although individual proponents of intelligence design have opinions about the nature of the designer, the age of the earth, common ancestor, Noah's blood, intelligence design as a position um, has no view on these matters officially. So the central message of intelligence design is thus there, somewhere, at some point in time, some intelligent agent somehow did something for some reason to affect the street life somehow. <laughs> <laughs> so, tactical basis. But, given that most students in the public school science classes in the United States will know how to fill in these blanks, will have notions about where, when, who, what, why. The intended and likely upshot of teaching intelligence design is clear, to encourage students to acquire or retain a belief in creationism and non-acceptance of evolution. And make this mistake, the target is public schools. Uh, of pandas and people, shown here, is the first book to use intelligent design in this specific sense. And this is a book that was constructed and marketed for use as a supplementary textbook in high school biology classes. Many people, you know, who do the science first and then write the textbook. That's not how it works for ID. Now, the role of intelligent design was not lost on a school board in Dover, Pennsylvania, one of 50, some 15,000 local school districts in the uh, country. This is a section of a map showing the boundaries of the um, school districts, and if you think this was a hard to uh, preempt. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, Dover Area School District, there we go. So what's going on in Dover? In 2004, um, the school board's attempts to get equal time for creationism mutated, eventually, into a policy saying that students will be made aware of gaps slash problems in Darwin's theory and of other theories of evolution including but not limited to intelligent design. The policy also added somewhat mysteriously, note, origins of life will not be taught. It was never really made clear why such a limitation was desirable or such a clarification was necessary. Be that as it may, a disclaimer that implemented the policy uh, explicitly referred students to no other book than of pandas and people for further information about intelligent design. No surprise then that 11 local parents filed suit, represented by the ACLU of Pennsylvania, Americans United for Separation of Church and State, and the private Philadelphia law firm Hepler Hamilton LLP, NCA, NCSE, um, we did a lot of work on this case. We put together the legal team. We provided uh, four of the six expert witnesses for the plaintiffs, and um, we put a lot of work behind the scenes helping the lawyers assemble their case. My colleague, Nick Komatsky, uh, deserves a special shout out because he put in about 80 hours a week over the course of a year. So, we put a lot of work into this. It was fun. Intelligent design did not do well in this trial. 
<laughs> the local backers of intelligent design were exposed as bullies, ignoramuses, arguably even perjurers. The judge concluded that two of them had lied uh, under oath and there were talk of possible charges. Intelligent design itself was exposed not only as scientifically bankrupt, but also as stealth creationism. For example, an expert witness for the plaintiffs, Barbara Forrest, examined drafts of both famous and people and testified that the book had clearly been revised in 1987 in order to circumvent the Edwards decision. One passage in a draft reads, evolutionists think that the, I'm sorry, I'm going the wrong way anyway. Okay, so the Sioux, there we go. Evolutionists think that the former is correct. Creationists accept the latter view from the draft. Okay, in the published version, this reads, evolutionists think the former is correct. Design proponents accept the latter view. Forrest even managed to locate a perfect transitional form in the intermediate drafts. Evolutionists think the former is correct. Oh, yeah. See design proponents as accept mm. the latter view, yeah. which is what you get when you don't look to see what's happening with your search in place. <laughs> so thanks to uh, evidence introduced over a uh, 40 days and 40 nights, very difficult, a uh, complete vindication of plaintiffs. Intelligent design is declared unconstitutional for teaching in public schools. So as intelligent design grew, not by a long shot, the new board, uh, excuse me, the Dover Area board, School Board did not appeal the decision, in part because everybody who was on the board who supported the policy, who was up for re-election, lost. <laughs> and uh, so there was no appeal, and this decision is directly precedent only in the middle federal district of uh, Pennsylvania. It's a stunningly well-wrought decision, however, and like the decision in McLean v. Arkansas before, it's going to have a great influence on any future cases. So, intelligent science certainly had a setback there. But remember all those little boxes showing you the boundaries of school districts? American education is highly decentralized. Nobody can keep their eye on every school district and something else is going to be bobbing up. Nonetheless, what the big trend is going to be is an int intensification of what I like to call the fallback strategy, spreading confusion about evolution under rubrics like uh, teach the controversy. Even before Kitzmiller, the Discovery Institute, again, the de facto institutional headquarters of intelligent design, had signaled its intention of doing so. As you see that I'm making progress. <laughs> <laughs> but this is the direction. Instead of mandating intelligent design, Discovery Institute recommends teaching students more about evolutionary theory. That sounds good. Including telling them about some of the theory's problems. Uh -huh. And they have a long list of problems, of course, which are mainly cribbed and updated from traditional creationist literature. So we're seeing catchphrases then that teach the controversy, evidence for and evidence against strengths and weaknesses, academic freedom. <laughs> academic freedom was sort of the, uh, you know, the new black for 2008. Um, we had something like um, 12 bills in state legislatures invoking academic freedom as a pretext for um, not teaching children properly about evolution. And indeed in Louisiana, they passed and enacted such a bill in 2008. And looking to see what the consequence of, consequences of this are, and they're not going to be good. Um, uh, the very newest one is advantages and disadvantages, which just surfaced in a bill introduced in uh, Kentucky in their House of Representatives uh, this month. All of these, of course, are basically your stealth creationist tactics du jour. What they have in common is that they appeal to our sense of fairness. And why not teach all the views? And in order to make that appeal, of course, they rely on a fundamental failure on the part of the American general public to understand what evolution is and to appreciate the overwhelming evidence for it. In a survey of 33 developed countries, the United States placed next to last for the level of acceptance of evolution, leaving out only Turkey. 